This is the second video in a series about making an inventory system. In the last video, we made it so that you can pick up an item and put it inside of a structure. And now in this video, we're going to make a custom object for your inventory slot and make it so that you can display those custom objects to show what's actually in your inventory. So great, we've got the structure set up and we can add items to that structure. Now we need to be able to see them actually in the game. And to do this, we're going to use something that is a little bit new to the engine. We're going to make a custom object or smart object. So I'm going to take the inventory icon, which again has the images saved as different animations with a name for the animation that's the same as the name of the object. I'm going to take the inventory text and drag that into the scene because these two things will make up the display that you see for the inventory. But in order to avoid managing two different objects and linking the text to the icon, we're going to put them together into a custom object. So I'll select an instance of both objects, right click, go to extract, and extract as custom object. Create a new extension, I'll call it inventory icon display, and I'll call the new custom object just inventory icon and I'll remove the objects from the scene list to avoid any confusion. And when I do that, I get to see the visual editor for the custom object. So this is a screen just for that. And if I go back to the game scene, I'll see this is now one object. And I'll change that back to inventory icon. I can go back to the visual editor by right clicking on the object and going to edit children. And then from here I can build the object but if I want to give it logic, I need to go to the extension editor, which also opens up when you create the object. And now from here, there's a lot of different options, but just focus on what I'm doing. So I have the object selected, inventory icon, go to properties, and I'm going to add two different properties. One for the name of the object, which is a string, and then another one for the quantity, which is a number. So now this custom object or smart object has name and quantity as properties of the object. But in order to actually interact with those in the game, I need to click here in the property and generate expression and action. And when I do that, it'll give me a new expression and a new action to use. So this is the action. And if I go to the game scene event sheet, I can click on add an action. And for the inventory icon, scroll down and find name. So I've made a new action that I can use with this object. And you can see that I can set it to a value. Now, back inside the extension editor, I'll go back to the object and property, and then do the same thing for quantity. Generate expression and action. So now there's an expression and an action. So I've got an action to set the name and the quantity for the custom object. And those are the two things that we want to display with our inventory. But using one of those actions would just change the property inside the object. It wouldn't actually do anything to the object. So inside of set name, we're going to change the animation by name of the inventory icon and set it to using an expression value. So when the action triggers, it will change the name to the value I put in that action and then use that value to change the animation of the inventory icon. And then I'll do the same thing for the text object. I'll change the text of the inventory text to equal value. So when the set quantity action triggers, it will change the quantity to value and then set the text to that value. Again, the one that I use in the action. So let's do a quick test to make sure that it works. So for the inventory icon object that we just made, we'll go to name and we'll set the name to gold. And then we'll set the quantity to 100. So now when we put the cursor over the object, 
in the game, it will change the name to gold and the quantity to 100. So back in the game scene, we have this inventory icon object in the game. And if I preview it and hover the cursor over the object, those actions trigger and change the animation and text to gold and 100. So now we have a working inventory icon that later we'll be able to drag around and do things to. But for now, we're just going to set it up so that when we add an object to the inventory, we create one of these icons to show that we've picked it up. And so to save time, we're going to duplicate add item because there's some logic in there that we want to copy and we'll change the name of this new external event to update inventory. And then we'll open it. And what we wanted was this section here where we use a slot number and repeat through the structure. But instead of changing the variables, we're going to use it to create the icons. So if the inventory slot is not equal to empty, so there's something there, we'll go back to the game scene. We'll grab these actions. We'll set the name to the inventory structure slot name, because if it's not empty, there must be a name there. So we'll set it to that name and we'll set the quantity to that inventory slots quantity. And just like before, this is going to loop through the structure until we're done repeating because we're out of inventory slots. But before we're done, we're going to add another event that actually deletes the inventory icons. And so whenever we update the inventory, we're going to start by deleting all of the existing icons and giving ourselves a blank slate to work from. And then we will create the inventory icon at the X and Y of the inventory slot. But nothing in this event yet is picking the right inventory slot. So we'll check the inventory slots variable for slot number and check to see if it's equal to the slot number that we're checking through. So we'll check to see if the inventory slots slot number is the same as the local variable slot number that we're cycling through. And now we're almost done with displaying this. We need to go to the project manager, go to global variables, add, need inventory update and we'll leave it as false. So we're going to toggle that whenever we need to update the inventory, like whenever we add, remove or update something. So we're going to check the variable need inventory update and check if it's true. And if it is true, we're going to set it to false. So it only happens once. And then we're going to link the external events for update inventory. So now when we need to update the inventory, we'll set it back to false, but also trigger this external event. So that will trigger all of these inside. And now the last thing we need to do is set up a trigger for this event. So we'll copy this action, go to the add item external event. And then right here, when valid space found is true, so we know the object found a spot inside the inventory. We'll set need inventory update to true. So then it's being set to true inside this event. And then the next event checks for it and updates the inventory. So let's preview the game now and see what happens. So if I walk into an object, you'll see the old one got deleted first and then the new inventory icon was created in the first slot. Then if I walk to the next object, it's in the second slot and then in the third. So in the next video, along with moving objects around in the inventory, we're going to show how to allow objects to stack because right now we're checking for empty slots and not slots that exist with the same name. So they don't actually stack together. And now be sure to click on this.